This video will walk you through the process for properly dimensioning drawing 2-1. In this particular video, for this particular drawing, we're going to first open up our drawing 1-4, which was the shim. And we previously drew that in unit 1. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the drawing number to 2-1 and I'm going to do my application menu save as and I'm going to change this to 2-1 so I'm saving a new copy of this then I'm going to jump back to model space and now I'm ready to start dimensioning now I've also opened up my original drawing for 1-4 the shim that has all of these dimensions on it. For drawing 2-1 we're taking that drawing that we've already drawn up and we are just going to add the dimensions and we're going to practice adding the dimensions correctly following those rules for dimensioning. Now there are a couple errors on this drawing with the way it is dimensioned. So we're going to take a look at those as we progress through this. And part of the process in learning how to properly dimension things, we will be taking a look at some drawings that do have some incorrect dimensioning techniques and we're going to learn how to correct those. So let's get started here. I'm going to jump back to AutoCAD. I want to first switch into my dimension line layer. And let's take a look at our first dimension. I always like to start with the overall dimension, 7.50. So in AutoCAD, we're going to come up here to our Annotate tab. I'm going to select my dimension linear. I'm going to select my first point, my second point, and pull that dimension up to where I want to go. Now it's very important that the first point we select is right here on the corner because if we were to select the bottom point, we would still have a measurement of 7.50. However, we no longer have that little gap like you see on the other side. And additionally, our extension line is sitting directly on top of our object line. So it makes it difficult to tell where the object begins, where the dimension begins, where each of those end, and so forth. Now, it's a little bit easier to see on the screen because our object layer is white and our dimension line is red. But when we print this out on a printer that only prints monotone or black, um, it'll be a little bit difficult to tell. So I'm going to make sure that this dimension is right at that end point. All right, let's go ahead and do this 1.50. And we're going to pull this up just so we have plenty of room but it still looks aesthetically pleasing so that these dimensions are not crowded. Let's do this 3.75 next. And this one's a little interesting because we are going to a center point, but we don't have that yet identified. So let's try and see if it will allow us to put a center mark in. So if I go to center line and come up to annotate center mark, if I select this square, it's not going to let me put that in because it only does that on arcs or circles. And if we take a look in the command line, it says select an arc or select a circle. This is neither. So that method is not going to work. Instead, let's go ahead and take a look at our center line. And we could draw some center lines in. That would work. Or another method that I like to use is to 
find the center point of my diamond shape here. Let's switch this into a different layer. I'm going to create a circle around that and it doesn't matter too much the size at this point. Let's get rid of that. And then I can come in here and annotate a center mark and it'll automatically put that in. So a couple different ways to put those center marks in. Again, there's 10 different ways to do everything in AutoCAD and you just pick which one works the best. So coming back to my dimension, I'm going from the center mark to the very edge. So let's put that one in. Let's make sure we jump back to our dimension line. So I'm coming from my end point to my center mark. Now we want this tier of dimensions to be in line with each other. So before placing this dimension, I'm going to move my mouse pointer over and I'm going to select the end of the right arrow on this dimension and that puts these center line, that puts these dimension lines in line with each other. Now one error that we do have, and I talked about there being a few different errors, is that our extension line needs to run all the way up to our center mark. So this is a little weird where we have this extension line going and then it just stops and a center line begins. That's a little weird. So I'm going to take my extension line and I'm going to move that grip point right up to the end of my center mark, but I still have that green center line behind it. So I'm going to create a window and delete that out. Now if I didn't delete that out and I turn on my line weights, you can see that we have a red dimension line sitting on top of or underneath this green center mark line. We don't want that. We just want that one line. Alright, so let's do this 1.12. And we're coming up here down to here. Okay, that's pretty easy. Let's do this 2.25 and then we'll do our overall measurement as well. So from down here, and I'm going to pull it from right here to save me a step. Make sure I'm in line. Delete this other piece out. And then let's do our overall measurement. Alrighty. Make sure they're nice and spaced correctly apart. Okay, so I have these three. I have my top three. I need this one inch one over here. There we go, and let's go ahead and pull this center mark out beyond our object. We always want those center lines extending beyond our object just a little ways. And now we run into this angular measurement, this 60 degree angle. Now this is one of the errors that we have because we have an arrowhead touching an object line arrowheads are only supposed to touch extension lines. So right here, we are using an object line as an extension line. And that's one of the things that we don't want to do. Now, we could, in this drawing, let's come up here and put an angular measurement in. We could move this along and see where else we can place it. We could move it way out here, but now we have dimension lines crossing. We could move it down here. And that would work, but it is kind of difficult to clearly see that and read that and understand what that is saying. A better method for placing that measurement would be to come to an area that we don't have a lot of other dimensions namely this area down here. So we could do a dimension down here and we could pull this out and that's a lot clearer 
than this 60 degree mark up here. Now you will notice that it is 30 degrees, not 60 degrees, because we are measuring from different lines and doing different angles. And if you remember using that coordinate system, drawing a line straight to the right is zero degrees, straight up is 90, straight to the left is 180. So this is saying straight to the left which would be 180 degrees, we want to go 30 degrees up from that, which would be 150 degrees if we were to actually draw this line at this angle, 150 degrees. So it's okay to move some of the dimensions around if it enhances the clarity of the drawing and makes it more readable and understandable. So let's keep on moving here. So we got that 60 degree angle. Next we have this 2.12 square. Now to put that in we need to do a aligned measurement which we practiced in the previous video and this one is a little bit interesting because typically you do not want dimensions on top of objects. So if I place it right here it's going to be directly on top of my object. However, in the case of this drawing it does not make much sense aesthetically to take this measurement and pull it outside of our object. It interferes with other dimensions and it just doesn't make it clear. So in this particular instance we would want that to be directly on top of our part. And that's okay. And there are some situations where it needs to be like that. Now one thing I noticed when I put this in was it reads it as 2.13 but on my original drawing it needs to be 2.12. So I'm going to take a close look at my grip points. So this grip point is right on that end point. Let's take a look at this top one. So I'm a little bit off. So I'm going to move that onto my end point and now I'm at 2.12. Now you'll also notice on the original drawing this needs to say 2.12 space SQ, meaning it's square. Each side is 2.12. To modify the dimension and be able to add more stuff, I'm going to double click on the dimension, and that's going to bring up my properties window. I'm going to scroll down with this little scroll bar here on my properties window, and I'm going to find where it says text override. I'm going to click in that text override and I'm going to type in 2.12 space SQ and hit enter and that's going to adjust that dimension and give me my 2.12 square just like it shows in the original drawing. Now realistically you could put a dimension in and write whatever number you want However, when you print it out and check with an answer key, it's not going to line up. Or if you send it to a machinist or a manufacturing facility and they realize that your measurements are not correct, they're not going to be able to make it and you're going to run into major problems. So let's take a look back at our measurements. Our last one here is this 45 degree. And again, we are using an object line as an extension line. So we're going to see if there's somewhere else we can put this particular measurement that's going to work a little bit better so that we're not violating those dimensioning rules. And on this particular one we can take a couple different lines here. So I'm going to take this bottom left one and this center line. And I'm going to see if I can pull that out. So that's looking pretty good like that because by doing this I am using extension lines as what those arrows are being pointed to rather than object lines. 
The other thing I'm going to run into is where I have this center line that just magically turns into an extension line. So we're going to have to correct that also. So I'm going to delete my center line and I'm going to see if it'll allow me to pull this a little bit further and it only let me go up to that corner point even though my grip point is all the way back here. One method that we can do to correct that is we could come in with a dimension line and we could come off of this a sixteenth of an inch which is the size of that gap and we could just connect these lines up here and that would solve it. Um, again you run into different things with different drawings that you have to kind of tweak things a little bit to make it clear and make it understandable. Um, this is more understandable than if you just have a center line that magically turns into an extension line. The last thing I'm going to do is count my dimensions. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I'm going to compare that to the original drawing. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 on the original drawing. So everything looks good there. I have everything here, but I need to jump over to my paper space and make sure that it still fits. So as you can see, my overall dimension on the right is getting cut off, even though I am still in my correct one-to-one -one scale value. And this is another thing that we need to continually take a look at. So if I scoot this over, I'm still squeezing those dimensions in. And so I'm going to go back to model space, and I'm going to manually pull these dimensions in just a little bit to give me a little bit more room. I'm going to make sure it still looks clear. And I think I will also, with this 4.50, I'm going to take that middle grip point and I'm going to pull it up just a little bit so that that dimension isn't sitting right next to this line. Again, just to add a little bit of clarity to the drawing. Let's jump back to our A size paper and shift that around a little bit there and that is looking very nice. I have changed my drawing number and everything's set up and looks good so let's go ahead and save this drawing because we already renamed it. If we want to plot it we will right click A size paper, select plot, preview it, double check to make sure that everything is how we want it to be. Right click plot and again this is saving it as a PDF Olson 2-1